If you're looking for a seven seat SUV, there's a good chance the Toyota Kluger would have been on your shopping list at some point or another. And with good reason. It's stylish, well packaged, competitively priced, and it's been on top of the sales charts for ages. But what if you want something newer? Maybe something a bit more stylish with more modern features and a more technologically advanced engine. You could be considering this, the new generation Mazda CX-9. And while a Kluger is decently priced, this is quite a bit cheaper and could be a bit of a steal. So we've brought together these two family-friendly SUVs to see whether you should go with the one that everyone buys or if you should roll the dice and go with the new kid on the block. Toyota versus Mazda. Well, they're duking it out on the sales charts across a stack of categories, so it makes sense to put these two family haulers head to head. You'd want your family to travel in style, so both of these are the top specs, the Kluger Grande and the CX-9 Azami, whatever that means. Both are all-wheel drive, both are petrol only, and both are on the pricey side, with the Mazda starting at just over 63 grand and the Toyota about five grand more. But it's what's under the bonnet that's the crucial difference here. Under the bonnet of the Kluger is a 3.5 litre V6 engine, which outpowers the downsized turbo four cylinder in your car. Hang on a minute, that may have more power, but the CX-9 has more torque, and that's what you're gonna need when you're lugging the kids around town. Well, I didn't bring the kindergarten class with me today, but we know that both of these are built with families in mind. Hauling kids around is what they do. But how do they cope with adults in the second and third rows? All right, before we play that game, something that's important to families looking at cars with seven seats, the cargo space. According to the spec sheets, the Mazda has a bigger boot with all seven seats in play, and it's also bigger with five seats in play. But the Toyota has a better, flatter boot floor with all seats down and the boot lid's glass partition opens separately. But does that come at the expense of space for second and third row passengers? Both the Kluger and the CX-9 have 60-40 split fold seats and the bigger portion is on the driver's side. That's a bit weird, you'd want your kids getting out on that side, right? Well, that's a curb side, but this is what we've got to work with and it's easier to climb through the bigger side and quite easy to move those seats forward. Yeah, there's plenty of space there for your foot to climb in, so. Yeah, there's a good gap this way, but not so much with the headroom. Oh, there we go. Very well done. All right, Thank I'm going to put this back all the way. Oh, watch my feet. Ooh, I think just... good there. How's that? I still have a little bit of knee room here. Foot room a little bit tight at the moment. Okay. All right, I'll move forward to a place where I'd be comfortable for a long trip. Wow. Right there. there is a lot of space back here now. Leg room's awesome. Head room, not so much. I'm actually literally touching the roof here. Yep. Back here, there's not a whole lot going on. You've got cup holders, no air vents. No air vents. Nope. No I've got air controls vents. here, but hopefully that can get to you. Oh, I hope so, because it's pretty close in feeling, like tiny little windows. The leather on the seats feels lovely though. Yeah, I agree. I think the leather looks the part, apart from the fact that it's stitched together pretty poorly in this car. Um, but I've got some nice things up here, including a drop down armrest with dual USB ports, which is very handy for kids these days. And these handy device pockets, which you can put a couple of things in, which is very nice. Lucky, you got more going on up there than I do. Yep. Right, front. let's take a look at the front. Done. It looks pretty classy in here. There's a uh, nice chrome with uh, that piano black, which can get a little bit fingerprinty. <laughs> um, but the whole layout of the cluster, I think, is pretty pleasing to the eye. The MZD Connect system, obviously, is exactly where you want it. Yep. But the rest of it seems to be crammed in there. Yeah, that, that system is excellent. Yeah. Probably the benchmark in the regular mainstream car class. Uh, but Mazda, again, falls short a bit on storage and those sorts of things. I mean, yeah. this center thing, split lid is a bit annoying. And the, yeah, your elbows are in the way. It's yeah. hard to get around to actually see in and reach in. It does have dual USB inputs though, so that's good. Cup holders as well. I mean, nice little storage space down here, it's quite deep, but again, it does still feel squished in under there. But it's pretty much the same as you get in the base model CX-9, so whether that's good enough or not is something that buyers might have to ask themselves. No extra trims, seat heaters, that's nice. Yeah, no cooling though. No cooling, no. Alright, shall we? So Teagues, I rocked up in the Toyota, so it makes sense that I get to start the Mazda. Yep. First impression is that it drives a lot smaller than the Kluger does. What I mean by that is it doesn't feel as big on the road. That 
mainly comes down to the steering because it's not as heavy and it's a bit more accurate. Like it's very you can direct. Place, you can place the car a lot easier on the road than you can in the Kluger. Yeah. It's funny, like you know this is a big car, it's a seven seater. The dimensions aren't too much different to the Kluger, but it feels smaller. You even feel a bit sort of closer inside and the interior feels less spacious Yeah, as well. yeah, I, I completely agree with you. It doesn't feel like a big cumbersome SUV where maybe the Kluger, maybe you'll find out, does a little bit more. Okay. So the other thing that I've noticed instantly is the turbocharged engine. Wow. It's quite peppy, quite peppy. It's got so much <laughs> torque. And that turbo engine certainly helps in that regard. I mean, generally it feels like more of a driver's car, the sort of car that maybe isn't just, you know, for running the kids around, but you might also want to have a bit of self-indulgent time and go for a drive in the bush. I think you could get the best of both worlds in that regard, and you could very easily forget that you're lugging another five seats behind you. Yeah. Yep. Like, you, just, you feel like you're in your own little world up the front here. Transmission's good as well. Really seems mm. to be picking the right gear for each situation that we find ourselves in. It doesn't seem to get confused at all. It sort of no. always seems to be in the right place for what you need and, and where you're going. Yep. So this is all-wheel drive, but there are no off-road modes or anything no. fancy like that. Did you get a sport mode though? Hit that button. All right. Instantly, transmission shifts back and... Whoa. <laughs> That's quick. You can have a bit of fun in this. That's quicker than you need a seven-seat SUV to really be. And a throttle blip on the downshift. <laughs> what are we talking about here? <laughs> Is this a family SUV or a, a bit of a sporty SUV? Yeah. Well, I give it that. I'll turn that off if I get in trouble. The ride's good as well. For, for a car that sits on 20-inch wheels with fairly low-profile tyres for an SUV, it doesn't feel like it's clumsy over bumps, although, if you do hit a mid-corner bump at, you know, maybe a bit higher speed than you should be doing for a family SUV, you will notice that the wheel will kick back yeah, in your yeah, hands. Will. So, yeah. I think it's the same for the Kluger though, so. It is a little bit of noise. You can hear the road coming yeah. up through the, up through the floor. Particularly yeah. in the front, I think. But, that said, this is probably the quietest Mazda there's been ever. Mazda's allowed. Cool. <laughs> quiet as one ever. It wouldn't be so quiet if you had five kids in the back. Exactly. You would not even notice that road noise. Need five kids in the back to drown that out. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so as well as all those positive aspects to the way it drives, I've also got a heads up display, which mm. means I can look straight at the road, have a quick glance at my digital speedo and know exactly where I should be and where I Make probably Make sure am. you're not letting it get away on itself. Don't get that in the which Kluger. Which would be easy so. to do in this, I think. You could easily find yourself ticking up a few extra kilometres than you mean to, particularly in that sport mode. Yes, agreed. So with a downsized turbocharged engine, you'd expect maybe that it would be quite a bit better on fuel than a big V6. Have a look, what's it reading at the moment? Uh, right now we're on 13 litres per hundred. Now that's not very good. No, not when you consider that every family is going to be watching the dollars pretty tightly. Wow. Instantly feels like there's more space in here. Yeah, there's much bigger aperture, which means it should be easier to get in and out of. Oh, fingers crossed. I think the Kluger mechanism is a bit easier. Just one lever, slide forward. Bit of a narrower gap here, but there's a built-in footwell, which is certainly helpful. Headroom, maybe a little bit more. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if that was easier. All right, you're in? Yes. Feet. Oh, oh. oh. there we go. Ah! Oh. He's stuck. <laughs> Almost, I'm out now, okay. Okay, you good? Yep. All right. Oh no, what's going on here? <laughs> I am totally jammed in back here. My feet aren't touching the ground. Okay. Because my knees are up on the back of the to seat. To stop that pain, I'll move, move forward to that position <laughs> that I was you. in last time. Yep, that's about right. Okay, so I do have maybe about this much knee room now. Okay, so not as much better. as the Mazda? Not as much as the Mazda, no. Headroom, mm, similar, maybe slightly more in here. Yep. Definitely feels a bit more open through the sides and the visibility yep. is better with those windows. Two cup holders either side. These headrests, though, are in the worst possible position. That is digging right into the back of my neck. Okay, so, so maybe not for adults, but at least you've got rear vents, which is handy. handy. And up front, I've got the controls for those vents, heating as well, and 
a flip down armrest that's just got cup holders, no USBs. There are no charge points back here apart from a little 12 volt down there. And what you do get though? Oh, above your head. Yeah. This guy. It's a Blu-ray layer. Yeah. Um, I don't know that. I don't know that that's the most modern way of consuming media. Mm. Three headsets and. Oh yeah. You, you'd think your kids might actually want to watch their own thing <laughs> on their own device. But In the day of iPads, I think this is pretty much redundant. Yeah. Yeah. Although it is kind of comfy here. Um, I've got sunshades like we do in the Mazda as well but mm -hmm. in this car we've also got tinted windows. Which yeah that's the Mazda doesn't have that that's fairly dark but you can't see in from the outside. Should keep it fairly cool in summer as well. Yeah. All right let's go to the front. Front seat. This is very different. The Mazda very modern stylized full of tech. This is feels spacious. Yeah. And functional. This shelf is amazing. It's brilliant I mean purses, phones, mm. wallets all that sort of stuff and you can pop the USB cable oh. up through that little porthole. That's clever, so no messy cables hanging out all over the place. Yep. Love it. Very practical, very functional. Speaking of practical and functional, <laughs> look at the size of that, that center console bin. It's huge. That's handbag size. That's not wallet, phone, lollies. Come on, what about the kids? iPads when you confiscate them from the kids. Yeah. Your whole handbag can go in there. This car also has cooled front seats, which the Mazda doesn't have. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe the switch gear doesn't look quite I don't as mind the classy. Cool seats. Yeah, it feels a bit old school, doesn't it? But yeah. it still has it. Yep. Which is nice to see. Speaking of maybe a little bit old school, the screen not quite as polished a unit compared That's to the Mazda. Definitely a bit flashier, isn't it? Whereas yeah. this is, it does look a bit dated. It feels a bit dated. Once you get used to it, it's actually not too bad. Yep. All right. Should we hit the road? Yes, let's do it. This is a lot different to driving the CX-9. It is, isn't it? Yes. It's kind of feels a bit heavier. You can hear that when you put your foot down. It's trying to find the gears and it's a bit sluggish. Yeah. But then once it picks up. Once you're in the rev range, it's, it's a lot more. It's pretty quick. Yeah, it's a lot more responsive once you get there. It's a bit more top heavy. Yeah, a little bit. I can feel myself wobbling a little bit more in the seat. <laughs> What about that steering though? It doesn't feel, it feels a bit vaguer. It doesn't feel like it's as direct as the Mazda. It's pretty heavy. Yeah. I think it's too heavy, to be honest. I think what they've tried to do is make it feel kind of sporty to drive, but because it's got... No, it just feels a little lost. Like it's not sure not what connected. it's trying to do. Yeah. So it doesn't feel as small on the road as the Mazda. Right. No. There's a lot more sort of space even between us and the yeah. in, up the front here. This is, it feels so much more like a practical SUV mm. where that has that character of being a little bit sportier. Yeah. And maybe a little bit more, I don't know, like it's more desirable or something? Where this is more yeah. this maybe... This is more sensible and yeah. practical and with the other, the, the CX-9's maybe a bit more of a, a statement. Car, yeah. Whereas this is if you just want to lug the family around in a practical, reliable, functional way. Like I do like the feeling of space in here. Yep. Um, it does feel bigger on the road, definitely. Yep. The good thing about both of them is they ride quite well considering they're on big, yeah. big wheel and tyre package. This is very quiet. It is a lot quieter than the Mazda to my sensitive ear. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. Yeah. You're sensitive ear Yeah. <laughs> when you put your foot down in this though, it does. It sounds alright. I think it sounds better than the Mazda. Yeah, don't we think? don't get a whole lot of that turbo no. in regards to noise. Yeah. Whereas this, if you want to hear it and you want to hear what you're asking it to do and the car's response, you can definitely hear it. The problem is that you've kind of got to ask it to do that a quite lot. a lot. Yeah. Yes, you do. And you have to floor it, like absolutely flatten it. Yeah. Particularly if you're heading up a hill and you want it to get moving, you've got to go flat to the floor. How's that fuel use looking? Uh, oh dear. Oh, really, really bad. <laughs> okay, this isn't indicative of what most people might experience, but 16 and a half litres per hundred. That is, is uh, that's getting up there a little bit. It's pretty high. And that sort of gives you an indication of the fact that you do have to work this engine quite mm. a bit more to get the most out of it. And the good thing about the updated Kluger, which is coming in 2017, 
they'll have a new eight speed automatic rather than a six speed. So hopefully some of those little issues. That'll iron out a few of the a few of the kinks where it seems to get a little bit lost. Yep. I guess. Well, what this does have that the Mazda doesn't, I noticed all these fun little buttons down here for off road yeah. driving. Yeah. So you've got a center diff lock. You've got hill descent control, you've got a snow mode. Snow mode. So if you've got low grip surface, it should help modulate the throttle and stop wheel spin. That's probably something that, if you're looking at the Kluger, it's something that it's Toyota's known for. You know, that all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive systems, yep. and off-road capabilities. Yeah. Um, definitely more so than Mazda. Yep, I agree with that. Couldn't imagine taking that CX-9 too far. Yeah, well, I wouldn't off even. The tarmac. I wouldn't take this thing too far off the tarmac either. No. But I'd feel more comfortable doing it because this has got that more rugged exterior, and it could wear a bruise or two a little bit better than the Mazda could. Yeah. Especially with that chrome out the front of the Mazda. So. So there are a few key differences between the two of these, and quite a lot of similarities too. It would be pretty hard, I think, to uh, make a call either way if you're a buyer looking for a seven-seat SUV and you had these two to pick from. Yeah, there are different considerations that you'll need to take in mind, but I've got my mind made up. You know which way you're going to go? I've made a decision, yeah. I'm still tossing up a little bit, so I reckon let's pull over and have a chat and see okay. if we can figure it out. All right. So at the start of the day, I was over there and you were over here. What's happened? Look, throughout the day, I've found there is a lot to love about the Kluger, particularly in the cockpit with the use of space, the shelf, the storage, the practicality, the functionality. It's very robust feeling and it does tend to fall over a little bit in the use of space as you get further back into the car until you get to the third row, which is pretty squishy, but it looks like an SUV. It drives like an SUV. There's a lot to love. This is a better driver's car. It's got a better use of space inside, better third row, better second row. The only thing about it that really irks me is that it doesn't have third row air vents. Yes. That's the thing That's that a plus could be car. a deal breaker, mm. but in this test, I'm taking the Mazda. So I will agree that that is a better driver's car and stylistically, it's far more modern, almost too stylized, I think, but when it comes to features, that's loaded with it. Where the Kluger really lets itself down, I think, is when you look at the price difference between the two. So. I would actually have to, to go win. the Mazda, yes. Mazda wins.